Everyone loves Mario, but his games have always had some confusing settings. Mario 1 was a basic adventure. Cool. Mario 2 had a surprising twist and ended up being just a dream. Mario 3 is widely accepted as being some type of stage play, with the opening cinematic to help prove this point, as well as a few other aspects. The point being is that Mario isn't really doing that much adventuring. Fast forward to Mario 64 and it looks like a legitimate adventure he's going on, right? Well, no, actually. Would you believe me if I told you that Mario 64 is just a movie production? Yeah, the entire game takes place on a movie set. Mario, Peach, and Bowser are all actors, and everything I thought I knew about my childhood is a lie. But in all seriousness, let's look at some evidence that might help prove this point a little bit more. The first and most obvious example would be the Lakitu that follows you around with his camera. Now his main purpose in the game was to help introduce the concept of 3D gameplay to an unknowledgeable player at the time. We were just so used to 2D side-scrollers. The idea of moving around a camera was very foreign to us. But what's the reason for needing a cameraman in relation to the Mario universe? Are they self-aware that they're in a game? No, the Lakitu is a cameraman for the movie. Peach's castle represents the studio lot. Inside the castle, we can now see all of the various sets that this movie will take place in. And look at that. In order to get to the set, there's this everyday wooden door with a big star on it. Why does that look so familiar? Hmm. We then see a giant painting hanging on the wall. These paintings embody the director's vision for the scene. Anyway, once you get inside the set, you're given a ton of different tasks to choose from. This is also the first Mario game to introduce a mechanic like this. You see, all of these different missions symbolize the creative process of a movie. Films are constantly going through rewrites. All of these missions symbolize the writing process. Maybe this mission is what the director originally envisioned, but the studio said no, this is what we want. But there was also an extended version, so they needed to film this scene. Then they filmed this, but it was eventually taken out as a deleted scene. Do you see my point? A movie can have so many variables and features involved, so the end result is filming everything that needs to be done for the movie. Now that we're in the actual movie, let's look at the gameplay and see what else we might have missed. The first thing are the power-ups. Here, there's no traditional Fire Flower or Tanuki suit. Instead, we're given three new hats that grant us new abilities, the Wing Cap, the Vanish Cap, and the Metal Cap. These power-ups are practical special effects that people can physically use in a movie. Let me explain. The Wing Cap allows Mario to fly. In order to make an actor fly in a movie, you normally use cables. The Vanish Cap makes Mario invisible. How do you do that with someone on camera? Match them up to a green screen, or something. I really don't know for sure, I'm not exactly Steven Spielberg. And lastly, we have the Metal Cap. Considering Mario's design when he gets the power-up, it's safe to assume that they just covered him with makeup and paint. Yeah, they caked his body in makeup like an avatar and told him to move like he was made out of metal. That's why there's no Fire Flower or Invincibility Star. In order to make a flame look real, you know, safely, or have that shining aura around Mario's entire body when he gets the star, that requires CG and in 1996, when this game, or movie, came out, CG wasn't exactly perfected yet. So if they wanted Mario to do something cool, they needed to use practical methods of doing so. There's one important item that was left out. When Mario takes damage, what's the one memorable item that will heal him? I'll give you a hint. Yeah, the mushroom. There's no traditional mushroom here. Instead, what makes Mario feel better after taking damage? coins, or for a better choice of words, money. Money is what makes Mario happy here. Every time he takes damage, he's messing up on set and getting frustrated. What's the one thing that'll keep him around to try again? You guessed it, money. Gold coins, red coins, blue coins, it doesn't matter. Mario loves them all. Now this is where things get fun. Every movie needs a leader. You know, a director. So who's the director here? Who's in charge of everything going on? Well, believe it or not, it's you. Yeah, you the player are the director. You control the actor telling him what to do. You control the cameraman telling him what angles work the best. You choose which scenes need to be done. You're the director of this entire movie. That's pretty awesome when you think about it. Even the idea of this game being a movie is a very fascinating concept. However, it's all just a possible theory. But if you take a step back and look a little deeper into the game, well, hey, anything is possible. The Mario universe is so monumental and astonishing that the idea of this game being a movie isn't impossible. But whatever. Thanks for watching.